Rockin' It with Van Halen on WICR. And and we're back. Yay, yeah. So we spoke about UKIP and the rise of them in the last segment, along with White House security. And now we'll be talking about, um, you know, our elections right here in the United States of America. Yay, go us. For now, hopefully, you know. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we have important Senate races coming up. It looks like the Republicans will keep the House, which is, you know, nobody thought the Democrats would take it after watching uh, this president perform for the past two years. Um, the Senate, I think it's 50-50. I don't think the Republicans are shooing just yet. I think the Democrats are much more smarter and, um, I guess if you want to say cynical, but so do Republicans. But I think the Democrats are better at being cynical than the, Repub- than the GOP is. In my eyes, the Republicans are going to probably tie at best. That's my prediction. They'll tie. They won't get enough seats in the Senate. They'll probably win Louisiana. I think they'll win that one. They'll probably win Alaska. North Carolina, I think they will lose. I think, um, I think, I think she'll, I think Hagan will, um, will keep that seat actually. Slightly, but I think she'll keep it. Iowa, I know that Joni Ernst is going to win that seat. And I will love when she wins. I'll be so happy. That'd be like the happiest moment of my night, hopefully, if, if she wins that seat. You know, we could use her with Cruz, Paul, and Lee in the Senate. That'd be great. And um, the governor races, the Republicans probably win the most, most gov- will keep the majority in the governorships as well. But again, you know, even if the Republicans do win uh, these seats in the Senate, and even, though, and even if they capture it with a 51 seat majority, do you really think the Republicans are going to stand up to the president? You know, the House of, we were promised in 2010 that the House of Republicans would, you know, stand up to Obama saying, you know, we'll take our country back. Yeah. We heard that again in 2012. You know, we have the House. Now let's win the White House and the Senate. We'll take our country back. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. We gave you the House. You, did, you have done nothing with it whatsoever. You know, did you make things worse? No. The only thing the Republicans did by winning the House was um, slower the decay of this country than it was than what's going before. You know, um, it really is telling to see where things are at the moment. But you know, do you, you know Republicans are nothing for the most part. You know, like I, I'm, I'm talking about the leadership, like Boehner and uh, McConnell. They're nothing but wimps in the Senate. They're not standing up for. Now again, I'm a I'm a conservative. Conservative values, you know. They're just a bunch of sellouts to you know. And if I was the Republicans or you know the true blue conservatives, the handful of them that actually understand it, you know, not the neocons or the corporatists uh, who are under Bush, stand up and do something. Even the libertarians should stand up and do something about this. You know, they're doing nothing. What the only thing the, the libertarians have done. If they left the Republican Party and helped the Libertarian Party. Other than that, they've done nothing else for, you know, standing up to Obama. Nothing else. You know, they're on their, they're on their own side. So it's up to those true blue conservat- conservatives out there who have no leadership whatsoever. Known in the media, Fox News is not conservative. Sorry, people. They are more Republican and more Bush than they are conservative. And it's true. Even most talk show hosts, Sean Hannity, more Republican and more Bush than he is conservative. George Bush was not a conservative in true meaning of the word. He's not a William Buckley, Ronald Reagan, Barry Goldwater conservative. He, wa- he just wasn't that. It's not true to say that. If you are saying that, then you clearly have no idea what you're talking about. Neither was George Bush's father a true blue conservative. Ronald Reagan was 80% Jew a true blue conservative. And, you know, these Republicans coming in, for the most part, are not true and blue. They're not. Sorry. Or true and red, because, you know, Republicans are red. I don't, I don't know, you know. So, you know, there's an obvious reason why, you know, of course, it's like an ever-ending cycle. One, t- you know, pe- when you get sick of the Democrats, you vote into the Republicans. When you're sick of the, of the Republicans, you vote into the Democrats. When you, and when you hate both of them, we have this. Uh, incompetent administration, an, an, an incompetent Senate, 
an incompetent house. Parties with a horrendous leadership. One party is far, too far to the left, and it, and it is. And one party is so dysfunctional, they don't even know where they are. And you know, if the Republicans want to keep the want to be want to um, contain the Senate from the Republic from Democrats, all they have to do is stand for something. Mitt Romney lost because he stood for nothing. Nobody knew what he stood for. I don't even know what Mitt Romney stood for, and I voted for him. Ma the main reason was because his name wasn't Obama. That's why. But you know, Republicans lost the election because. The presidency last time and the Senate too to some extent. Well, maybe by being stupid, because you know who, you know those two picks in Indiana and Missouri were just horrendous. And you know, anyway, but Mitt Romney stood for nothing. He had one good moment at election, and he pretty much threw do everything else away. It was it was pretty much obvious from the get go. Unless you watch Fox News, that Mitt Romney was going to lose because Fox News told all his viewers what they campaign, Sean Hannity. Bill O'Reilly had a uh, had a couple of people on, um, Greta. All these people said Mitt Romney would win, and those people who watched Fox News would have believed you, and would have gone guaranteed a, a Romney victory. And again, looking back at the election now, we know why Mitt Romney lost. He stood for nothing. His response was, "Go on my website, see what I stand for." I want to hear it from the candidate. And I believe that's why Joni Ernst will win in Iowa, because she stands for something. She does stand for true, conservative values. I've seen the debates. I've seen her speak. I, you know, I know a lot about this candidate, and she is pretty much more true and blue than Ted Cruz is. She's more true and blue than Rand Paul is. And those are the two big boys in the GOP right now. But, you know, outside of countrywide politics, we have important uh, state races as well to talk about. We have Rob Astorino against Andrew Cuomo. We have John Cahill against uh, Avic Snyderman. We have Tom DiNapoli against Rob Acosta. I think I think that's the, I can't pronounce the guy's name. I think it's Acosta. I could be wrong on that though. It, it, it's, it's a long A name. But now let's face it. Tom DiNapoli will be reelected. He'll probably get you know a good portion of the vote. The one, the one, one race I know that Republicans can win and should win is that state attorney general attorney general election. If John Cahill cannot beat Eric Snyderman, now John Cahill does have some grip in Albany. He does have he does, he does know you know he he should have big donors. And you know it. it the only way John K if John Cahill wins, Rob Bethany has a chance to beat Cuomo. You put it that way. I think John Cahill will beat Eric Snyderman actually. I think he will. And the polls are saying otherwise, but I think, you know, when people really know and actually look up John Cahill, I'm not voting for the guy because, you know, he's um he supports the Dream Act to some extent. So I'm not voting for him. I'll be voting for the Libertarian Party candidate. But, you know, that's we'll talk about who I'm voting for. Probably the week before the election, because you know, right now I want to be fair and balanced first, even though that wasn't. But John Cahill, Pataki guy, I think will be will become a attorney general. I saw him in the Bronx, um, I think like a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I shook his hand. Was, you know, he's a nice guy. I met Eric Snyderman too. Um, he was in Brooklyn. I wa probably no, I met Snyderman. Well, I shook his hand, and I don't want to say I met him, but I shook his hand. And the Columbus Day Parade in Brooklyn, I believe, last year. Something like that. He was there, and you know, and the, they're both they're both nice men. You know, they shook my hand. They said, "How are you?" And I said, "Good." And they left. So you know, that's all I know about them, for you know, personally. But you know, both of them are pretty much both political stooges. You know, John Cahill is a typical New York Republican, and Eric Snyderman is a typical New York Democrat. For governor race, the, the the choice is clear. Either you know, you vote for Cuomo, who's for for, for Republican standards. Economically, it's not the worst thing you could get. You know, the worst thing you could have gotten was um, teach out, and she lost, but she did make progress. And um, also there was um, Cuomo, who I thought at one time could beat Hillary for the presidency, but you know, not after that primary. I think that 2016 is no longer an option for uh, King Andrew. So. 
Um, so I, I don't, I, I can't see him as a president this time around. But Cuomo, economically, let's face it, for Republicans, you know, compared to Obama, compared to, you know, all the liberal Democrats like the Blasio, if I'm, you know, to all to Obama, to even, you know, our wonderful Massachusetts senator uh, Elizabeth Warren, isn't that bad? Andrew Cuomo is like a Joe Lieberman Democrat. He's not a blue dog. You know, but he's a, he's a, he's a, you know, Joe Lieberman, Democrat, you know, he's liberal, but, you know, he, he'll compromise and make, and make moderate or conservative changes. Now, socially, the guy is nowhere near conservatism at all. But for Republicans, you know, this is, this is why Republicans are not, you know, going all out for Rob. It's because, you know, they like what Cuomo's doing economically. And let's face it, the past two years, the Republicans, you know, worked with the guy. They did, you know. Now, Rob does have an uphill battle upon him, but I think he has a chance to win. I still think he can win. Now, you know, is, is, is it a big chance? Like, you know, is it 50-50? No, of course not. But there's a chance for a Rob victory and a Rob upset. Now, the polls right now, the last poll was from um, Vance Musin, who said it was 49 Cuomo, 32 Astorino. And that's within 17 points. So, of course, Astorino was down by 30-some-odd points back in July. He's down, down by 17. I think Astorino must do three things to win. A, stay on message. Whether New York is winning or losing. That's a great message. I think it's resonating with people. Number two, work upstate a lot. Come down to the, you know, what he's doing right now, he's working upstate a lot. Coming down to Long Island and New York City. Now, Long Island, of course, we all know, is pretty much a battleground. Of New York of New York statewide elections, you know, we all know the strategy is 60% upstate, 30% downstate. Long Island will be the battleground. Maybe maybe Westchester and Rockland too, but that's pretty much downstate anyway. And I think Cuomo will win Westchester County. I think it's, you know, with I think he will. Now it doesn't mean Rob's doing a bad job in Westchester, but I think Cuomo will win because Westchester is a Democratic county. It's you know. It's not lean. It's likely Democratic. But so, say a message. As we know, continue working upstate. Pound that message upstate with everything you have. You know, spend all your money upstate. Come downstate, you know, and count on your grassroots downstate team, like New York City team, to, you know, help get out their vote. Number two. Um, number, number three, I mean. Get all, you know, just be you, you know. Don't be a fraud. Don't be a Romney. That that that's what Asenio should not do. Don't be a Mitt Romney. You know. You know. Don't you know? Be one guy one on one interview and be another guy somewhere else. You know. Stick with who you are. And I think those three things: work upstate, stay on message, and be who you are, and don't be a fraud, will help you win the election. And I think he will win. What? Well, change it. Change the thought. I think he can win. It's still possible. The math is still there. Cuomo below 50% in one of the polls. And that's what the Asenio team wanted. And you have a month to go. So we'll see what happens in, in that one. But I do think that um, it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. You know, a lot of key upcoming events coming up. Uh, Asenio will be, uh, I believe it was in Long Island yesterday or today, which is very good. But, you know, if he's true to himself, you know, the old, the Cuomo at, all the Cuomo as in the world, you know, making him as a monster will not work. Now, to, for Cuomo to win, it's obvious, you know. Uh, don't, do any, don't do any interviews because, you know, of Moreland. Don't do, um, you know, don't snub the opponent because, you know, like, when you see you have to shake his hand, say good luck and you know, walk away. Don't, don't snub him. Don't ignore him. And number three, um, oh god, um, don't, I, I want to say don't debate, but don't give Rob any more attention than he should get, if you know what I mean, you know, just play it safe at the moment, which Cuomo is playing it, I think Cuomo is playing it this, this, this race a little bit too safely, actually, you know, on, t on, on the ads, he's being a lot more aggressive, but when I see him, you know, on the YouTube clips, on, you know, when t talking to people and campaigning, I think he's playing this race too safely, actually. You know, he should he should treat Rob like Carl Palladino. And Cuomo pulled out all the punches for Palladino. And I don't think he's doing so this time around for Rob Astorino, though. I think he's holding back a little bit. Because I think he's trying to play it too safely. 
Yeah, remember, and the primary played it too safely, and look what happened. He got he, he pretty much got humiliated almost. You know, uh, he lost a lot of counties in upstate New York. You know, so you know, if Rob portrays himself as he is, you know, a likable guy. A lot of those liberal Democrats who voted for Teach Out either will stay home and stay neutral, vote for, vote vote Green for Harry Hawkins, or you know maybe a couple of thousand of them will vote for Rob. And who knows? And that could sway the election if it's close. And I think it's going to be close. I think Cuomo will win by, I think, I, I believe Cuomo will win by single digits below ten percent. And I'll be interested to see. You know, Rob, just stay who you are. That's all he has to do. Stay who you are, stay on message, and work upstate like there's no tomorrow. I don't want 60% upstate. I want 75% upstate. That's what I want. And continue at the base. Cuomo already has his base, but the far left of that base may not show up. So be who you are. Be likable. Be like, you know what? I disagree with that guy, but I like him. You know, he's real. Cuomo's too much of a politician. I like reality. I'm going to stay home and sit, you know, sit back. Or, you know what? I like him. I might vote for him. I might. Or I might tell my friend something good about him if he's undecided. So, you know, that's the po- that, that's the positiveness of staying who you are. And Rob's a nice guy. You know, Rob is a Carl Paladino. Went, you know, some, you know, anti-social guy. Well, it seems to me that he was anti-social because, you know, Paladino was like, you know, Ugh, you know, the way he handled himself in that campaign last time around. So, yeah, that's the election roundup. That's what I think, that's what I think Rob should do to win. I think um, if he sticks with that formula, he he should do pretty good. Will he win? I don't know. I'm not going to say. Will Cuomo win? Possibly. Possibly Cuomo will win. But, you know, I don't think it's race over yet. Definitely not. Cuomo will, or Astorino will slip up. If Cuomo slips up one more time, he will lose. I think so. Which is why I think he's playing it a little bit too safely and not going after Reno the way he should be. So that's about, that's about politics for today. I have some time. And today, let's talk about some Doctor Who. The greatest show in the world. Now, you know, I spoke about politics for 50 minutes already. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Right now, the last segment of every show will be Doctor Who. The greatest show in the world. That's right, everybody. Doctor Who time. And when Doctor Who's over, we'll still talk about some Doctor Who. Because we also have classic episodes. Which I think are better. Sorry, new Who fans. But yeah, so I think Doctor Who, the new classic show is better. But let's talk about this episode. You know, this is my Doctor Who review. And of course, when My Little Pony, Fetch's Magic, starts up, I will, be, I will do reviews of My Little Pony, Fetch's Magic shows. Of course, my favorite uh, pony is Twilight Sparkles and, and or Rarity. Definitely not Rainbow Dash. You know, I hate that character. But more on Doctor Who. What a wonderful ep- Well, the episode was better than the last two. For those of you new who have, have never seen the show before, or just hear about it, and who want to get into it, or want to talk about this season, or or, or, or Doctor Who fans, and want to talk about this season so far, let me summarize it before this episode like this. The first three episodes were fabulous. All good. The next two was horrible and Eh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll take it. This episode was a little bit better than average. Uh, Capaldi, as Doctor Who, I love him. He's a great actor. He pretty much is why the last two episodes were, were watchable. Well, two weeks ago was watchable. This one was enjoyable to a certain extent. So I think that's going to be very key in the coming in the, the season, if, if, the, if the rest of the season shapes out like the last two seasons have, I, Capaldi's acting will save it. So more fact, have any nose than a glove. But overall, Capaldi great. Clara as Jenna Coleman, um, the companion. Eh, you know she's a good actress, but Clara, no, I don't see it. You know, I don't really like. I, well, of course, I like Clara. She's beautiful. But the character itself, without the pretty face, eh, you know. The companions in the new series have, aren't really that good. Sorry, everybody. But, you know, the writing isn't as good either, you know. I, I know the show's changed, but there's too much going on in that one hour, you know. Compared to the old days, you have four parts. You have the intro, 
you know, or all that. That's leading to a conclusion. So you had time to know what's going on. You had time to know the system, and you had time to know the side characters. Now the new series does that to a certain point, but not that good, you know. And the story arcs Morfet has been doing for the past couple of years, since he's since he's been a showrunner, has pretty much fallen short. This guy wrote the episode Blink, considered top two episodes in new Doctor Who history. And you know, when he took over the show, we were like, yeah, this is it. Here we go. You know, Morfet, RTD, thank you for bringing the show back. But Morfet, you'll bring, you'll, you know, you'll bring back our dreams of classic Who. The classic Who variant will conquer Doctor Who once again. But that's not what happened, no. <laughs> no. When season 5 ended, the, the you know, uh, people, fans of Doc, the, the whole show, Doctor Who, the classic and new, well, well, you know, we were happy. Cause, you know, it was a good season. You know, the story arc worked for the most part. And, um, yeah, it worked pretty well. And now, you know, season 6, it was like, what the, what in the world was that? Season 7, just sucked. And now, you're like, eh, you know, I don't care anymore. It's gonna be a very interesting series. Last episode, quick point. Okay, you know, storyline, a little bit weak. Villain, a little bit weak. The acting, good. And this is a, and this could be a key episode for the rest of the season. So, watch this episode. If, if, if you're just getting into it, watch this one to get into what's going on. To get the feeling of the characters. And this could be a very important episode in the season, in, in, in this season's history. So, who knows? Um, so that's Doctor Who talk. We spoke about UK election, security breach in the White House, elections countrywide and locally. And we spoke about some Doctor Who, which is always good to see. So, it's 11 o'clock, folks. Got class. And, um, hopefully the Jets win this Sunday. I doubt it, but you never know. Hi, right, buddy. Thank you for watching. I love you all. Uh, peace out, I guess. W-I-C-R